scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. There are breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. There are liftings in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Are you praying? There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. the Lord for a visitation tonight, an encounter that will change your life. Shabrato sata shala kronda sibati shiata. Are you praying? Shabrande kete baha shala bako siata. Shabranda dozi siata hasata. Lord, let something happen in our lives that will change and shift us forever. of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was very touched when I saw the theme of the conference and I just wondered what would have gone into the heart of the servant of God and his dear wife to have put such a conference. But then I discerned that truly this conference is a prophecy that there are people who the Lord is trusting to lift from certain dungeons into a level and a dimension where their lives will speak the praises of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And I plead with you in the name of Jesus that you be sensitive to these few minutes that we have together. Um, it takes a lot of discernment to receive at prophetic moments. And there must be a requisite level of meekness. You must open up your heart to discern what God is saying. There shouldn't be assumptions at all. These are spiritual realities. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You're going to sit down, but please help me with the sound. While I stood here, I began to see the wind just blow around this place. And when I saw that wind, the scripture that came to me was Ezekiel 37. And he said, prophesy to this book. He said, as I prophesied, there was a sound. There was a sound. We'll sit down shortly for the word, but I just want to honor that which the Lord had opened my eyes to see. I saw a wind blowing. And I want to stretch my hands because I'm seeing the number nine. Pastor, please, is it all right? 
the number nine. This is what I see in the spirit. And the power of God is coming upon those people. It's a strange restoration. Please, I want you to bring them out right now. In the name of Jesus, I come with the rod of a higher priesthood. I declare by the spirit. You're being shifted to a new season in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, please bring them out. I speak by the message of the God of David that your life will never be the same. I send this word as a prophetic instruction in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, may that wind flow over the length and the breadth of this building and set you free in the name of Jesus Christ. Just a minute and we'll be seated. Let's just honor what the Lord is doing. Please bring them out. Shalibrando Sadikata. You will never, never be the same, I assure you. Shabro Satiba Shalakusiata. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is asking me to prophesy speed. Please, whether you are an usher or not, hold them because they will start running physically. The Bible says, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. Right now, I stretch my hands and I declare that grace, that delay, you call it a restoration. I speak by the voice of prophecy in the name of him who died and rose again, that you are shifted to a new dimension in the spirit, a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, you will never forget this conference for the rest of your life. Help this woman, please. Bring them out. But help this woman. I stand in partnership with the grace upon this house and we declare by the spirit we open the prison doors and we declare by the voice of prophecy, move forward, make progress, move forward, advance by the spirit of grace. for conferences like this like the man of God was sharing it is important for you to understand that this is not just some religious activity conjured by men this is an expression of a deep desire from your pastor and your father to see that truly you step into superior dimensions in the spirit where your life becomes a testament of his speakings and I've only come tonight to lend my voice with your father and the grace upon this house to call the devil a liar even in this season and to decree and declare that truly the Bible says there is hope for a tree in the name of Jesus Christ and because you are that tree that is planted in the house of God the Bible declares that you must flourish in the courts of our God hallelujah for all those who have come out, I stand in partnership with the grace in this house. And in the name of Jesus, that which needs to be corrected, we correct now in the spirit. That which needs to be taken out, we take out now in the name of Jesus. That which needs to be introduced, we introduce now in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare that the end comes to captivity. Receive granted access to speak in your life here and now and let Jesus be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ God bless you please be seated if you can thank you Jesus 
water you turn into wine open the eyes of the blind there's no one like you none like you it's into the dark you shine and out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like you this is our testimony tonight that our God is greater our God is strong Holy Spirit and let Jesus be glorified in the name of Jesus please be seated the mystery of restoration the mystery of restoration please just help those under the anointing just guide them so they don't injure themselves and let's lend our attention even at this time The Bible declares that the kingdom of God is a compendium of limitless possibilities. Scripture does not leave us in the dark as to the possibilities that can happen to a believer in Christ. Every once and again the Bible would take out time to remind the inhabitants on earth that the God that we serve is a mighty God and that he is mighty on the strength of his names which are representations of his ability and his character. Please follow closely. According to scripture, every time God revealed a dimension of himself, that dimension was captured in a name and preserved for generations to come. So that if at any point you forgot that attribute of God, he would come through that name and remind you that this ability is also part of what makes me God. Are we together? So scattered all through scripture are the names of God, which are a representation of his ability, which are representations of the limitless possibilities that are in this kingdom. So the Bible does tell us that we are in a kingdom with limitless possibilities. Again, one of the things that from scripture we learn that God hates is idolatry. Because it's an attempt to bring him side by side to gods that do not match his ability. Are we together? Every time people demonstrated idolatry in scripture, they compelled the God of the heavens to react. And he did it in a way and a manner that made all and sundry within that dispensation to return back to the honor of the God of heaven. So the Bible is a compendium of God's manifesto. From Genesis through Revelations, we see the consistency of his love, his power, his majesty through dispensations. Whether it is the parting of the sea, whether it is in prophetic statements, parables, the workings of Jesus when he came as God manifest in the flesh. All this is to the end that the saints understand that the God that we serve is unlimited. It's not just, it's not just a religious understanding that he truly is limit, unlimited. Are we together? But then the Bible also lets us know, please look up, that the work of the believer in Christ the quality of the believer's work in this kingdom is not only dependent on the love of God, but is dependent on our understanding the systemic character of the kingdom. That God is a God of systems and that the quality of my life and your life will not necessarily be a reflection of his love for us. Are we together? 
but our understanding of what Moses would call the ways of God. So the depth and the degree to which I comprehend the ways of God will culminate to the extent of my victory in this kingdom experientially. Now for many believers the challenge is that we have an awareness of the possibilities that are captured in scripture. The average believer can tell you the possibilities that are in scripture. The average believer, even if he does not know, he will not it when he hears it. The challenge most times is understanding the dynamics that cause the word to become flesh. The Bible says, and the word became flesh, and then it dwelt among us, and then we beheld. We couldn't behold what was locked up in the realm of the spirit. It had to gain entrance into our realm. So for as long as our profession of the faith remains just as a verbal communication or a wish locked up in the realm of the spirit, frustration will be imminent. We must sustain the spiritual technology to translate realities that have been captured as written in scripture to make it become our experience here and now. Hallelujah. So the Bible shows us through stories, through prophecies, through illustrations that for instance, favor is a possibility with the saints in this kingdom. Are we together? If you are not in this kingdom, you cannot understand these workings because they are called mysteries. A mystery is a hidden body of truth that is privy to a group of people. Like the military have their lingua franca. If you're a military person, they can speak. It's a hidden code of operation. You have to be trained to understand what they are saying. So in the kingdom, we have a system of operation built by God's own intelligence. That if the saints access that body of truth, the Bible calls it marvelous light. We are not just a chosen generation and a royal priesthood just because we happen to be at a time in history alone. But that God has granted us access to a hidden body of truth that the Bible calls marvelous light. And it is on the strength of that light that our lives show in experience that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and indeed a peculiar people. Are we still together? So scattered through scripture we see that favor is a reality. We saw it in the life of the nation of Israel. Scattered through scripture, we see that speed is a possibility. Scattered through scripture, we see that restoration is a possibility. Scattered through scripture, we see that all these dimensions are there so that, listen, the Bible says the things that are written aforetime, it says that they are for our learning. That means those, those historic materials should mentor us into an understanding. They are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope. Hope that makes not ashamed. That if he did it before, then he's able to do it again. And one of those mysteries that represents a system of advantage as I call them. You see, everybody's life is ordinary and the same. Except for the leverage that the systems of advantage provide for you. So we all have common destinies, but we begin to rewrite our destinies as we access the systems of advantage. We introduce these dimensions of kingdom reality to our lives and our lives begin to change. So it is possible to find two people born of the same woman under the same conditions, sociologically speaking and territorially speaking. So you would think that their destinies would look like the same one, you know, would, would, would be the same. But one of them would access these systems of advantage and begin to change things in their lives. When they looked at Jesus, because of his association with Nazareth, even Nathaniel spoke and said, can anything good? It was not Nathaniel's fault. Jesus never said, you are lying. That is the pattern, except that the son of the living God already had his to change it. Everything is true until your life changes it. It is true that delay is there. It is true that failure is there. It is true that spirits associated with territory can manipulate disfavor upon people. It remains true until you rise by light. Are we blessed? And so we want to explore very briefly the mystery of restoration. 
that among the mysteries, the body of truth, according to Matthew 13 and verse 11, in one of his mentorship sessions, Jesus began to teach. And while he was teaching in parables, he was shrouding mysteries in those parables. And then later on, he would explain to the disciples and he said, it has been given unto you to know. The word know there does not just mean an awareness. It's the same word that is used as a man knowing his wife. An encounter with proofs. It has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. These are the ordinances that cause the saints to command dominion on earth. You may have heard me say it once and again that dominion is not an impartation. Dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. Hallelujah. The mystery of restoration. Are we still together? Joel chapter 2 and verse 25. We've learned from scripture and we've learned from the experience of living that it is possible to lose things. Sadly, many people have lost loved ones. Sadly, many people have lost money. Sadly, many people have lost time. So there are, the Bible lets us know that the concept of losses or losing is a concept that exists with men. We can lose things, but according to the, the, the Bible, the greatest loss that can happen to a man is not the loss of things. It is the loss of time. And so when he begins to talk about restoration, his emphasis is the years, not the things. I will restore the years because when you meet a dying man he will not ask you to make, transfer money into his account the greatest need of a dying man is more time Isaiah 38 Hezekiah did not require more money or an enlargement of his throne or rest round about Hezekiah's request was God give me more time that means whatever steals your time is a true enemy. If you lose money and gain it back, you lose your reputation, there are systems to build it back. But when you lose time, listen please, it is because of this that the Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise, he says, and not as unwise. And what is the wisdom there? Master anything you know in scripture that will help you to redeem time. He called it wisdom. That means when I explore the mysteries of the kingdom, it will give me an advantage over time. Are we together? If you lose time, there may not physically speaking be a way of gaining it back. But we thank God because we serve a God who does not live in time. We thank God because we serve a God who does not really even live in eternity because eternity is still a subject of time it's just time without end we serve a god who lives in a realm that the bible calls unapproachable light his realm is now no past no present no future now the concept of distance time does not is not a reality that exists in his realm it was a borrowed phenomenon to help men catch up with him that god does not live Genesis 1 verse 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That means he was not in the heavens, he was not in the earth. You can't create what you are inside. Are we together? Now, please sit down, pay attention. So when we talk about the mystery of restoration, we are trusting by the spirit of grace and wisdom to explore the systems of advantage. Listen, it is on the strength of these mysteries that Apostle Paul will say, for we know that all things, all things do not just work just because we are Christians. There is a system of advantage we have that regardless, that's why many times when you are complaining, God really does not listen because in his realm, it doesn't make any difference what you've lost or what you had. It, it doesn't, those realities are, are, are vain. It is within his power to reconstruct anything as though it never left. So when you are saying, God, remember what I went through. He says that, that is unnecessary. There, there are too many mysteries I can use to bring you back. It's why it's painful to not trust God. 
because it's an insult on his ability that even in heaven they are not done learning his ability in heaven without the constraint of the mortal nature with that heightened level of intelligence and through ages they have they have been students of god in heaven and yet they have not been able to comprehend so when the inhabitants on earth now begin to use the the temporary vacillations to insult the character of god is indicting on his nature when god says he is god it takes the spirit of god to help you understand the meaning of that statement now you be god almighty god listen to yourself you know be man stop let me explain that to you god is not a man he only became a man when you say god is a man that means he must submit to someone the person who created him must demand worship from him but he became a man meaning that it was an inconvenience he wore for as a representation of love not weakness you see that we are men we are not god we are men but he made us it's a translation so that our dominion this godlike dominion today is not absolute dominion is shared dominion dominion that can be withdrawn as proof that it did not originate from you you, you, you get what i'm trying to explain yes so when when we say god is not a man and then the bible says the man jesus is seated at the right hand of the father it's not a contradiction god is not a man but he became a man so that he will reveal the extent of the love of the father but i assure you god is not a man hallelujah praise the lord genesis chapter 40 help us holy spirit the things that are written aforetime the bible declares that they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope genesis chapter 40 just a little background this is the story of joseph and his sojourn from his father's house to the place of destiny this is a classic on understanding the dynamics of destiny it is one of the classic expressions of how a man can transit himself from his father's house through the vicissitudes of life into a place of prophecy there is a spiritual road map through the life of joseph that if understood discerned and followed by any christian inevitably regardless of that which you face on the way you will emerge not only a champion but you will be a representation of the desire of god are we together yes this is very very powerful it's amazing pastor sir that when you begin your journey with god he never tells you what will happen on the way he will tell you that you will get to a land flowing with milk and honey so that you will set your gaze on that end but the dynamics of that journey is something that we must learn are we together please follow me genesis chapter 40 so um at this point a lot had happened to him his time in the house of potiphar and potiphar's wife who came around and said he raped her and cut the long story short he's in the prison now are we together and it came to pass 40 verse 1 after these things that the butler of the king of egypt and his baker had offended the lord of egypt verse 2 and pharaoh was wrought against two of his officers against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers and he put them in word in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison hmm. the place where joseph was bound stop there please look up very interesting rendition that there are times there is a location in destiny please keep that scripture where both good and bad people meet there is a location in destiny that does not necessarily depend on the accuracy of your work or otherwise the bible says two people who had offended the king came into the prison and to their shock they found out that the innocent was also in the prison 
that the godly was also in the prison that there is a place where both men of character and lack of character can meet there is a place where men who are sincere and passionate and those who are lazy and unserious will meet this is a very strange mystery are we together now so the discourse starts in the prison why will a good man and an evil man still find themselves in the same position a man who feared God who has shewed evil who on account of his integrity you would think that that man should just be defended and never even need to go through such a thing where is the scripture that says I was young and now I am old I have never seen the righteous forsaken please give us that scripture this is a revelation that will help us by the spirit to mature and edit our interpretation and also discern how God answers prayers because when God speaks to you you must understand what he's saying for instance Mary's trouble started the day he said you are highly favored that means everything that follows God's statement in his eyes is called favor from the day God tells a woman you are highly favored she gets into trouble her stomach is protruding there are rumors all around and they are saying Mary I thought you were a virgin and she says I still am and says so how do you explain this which rabbi came around and no 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 it was a ghost I met an angel who told me a ghost from heaven will come and that what is in my womb is a holy child you know how stupid that sounds and yet in the mind of God he calls it favor so could it be that what you are going through now that the devil is making you feel that it is defeat in the eyes of prophecy because a day will come the reward will be for only the, the person who the person who has passed through what you have passed through and if you have not gone through that kind of thing you cannot qualify for it are we together there are times in life where they will invite you to come and preach not because you can preach but you are the only one who have gone through what you have gone through and you have earned the right God calls it Favor. are we together that a day can come in your life look up please when the requirement will be the person who was never raised by a father never raised by a mother who among the people to be honored went through life on his own unassisted you will now find out that your 13 years of pain now puts you in a position of exclusivity there is a monetary value to pain there is a destiny value to pain you must learn to read the writings on the wall so you do not call what is profitable a disaster is God helping us so back to the scripture we're exploring the mysteries of restoration the discourse starts with the prison are we still together that an innocent young boy who served the Lord sincerely and you know the beautiful thing about scripture is that it gives you an opportunity to see the story from God's standpoint and from the standpoint of man it would have been a disaster if we did not have the opportunity to know the truth of the story because it would then alter our interpretation about Joseph hmm. so good people and evil people can find themselves in the prison so Jesus can be on the cross and yet two criminals are by his left and right and all of them are hanging on a cross so if they say give me the list of all who are hanging on the cross you will call Jesus too as one of those hanging on the cross and by the interpretation of men anybody who hangs on the cross is a sinner except that one is hanging on the cross not for the sin he committed for himself it's a sacrifice for others this already should be a message to give us wisdom that when you see people go through things you cannot understand the secret is to pray for them and remain discerning because there are people carrying burdens they have no business carrying God part of the requirement of the grace they carry has compelled them to go through things that ordinarily they will never have gone through listen 
It's a mystery in the making of man. It's how compassion is built. The ability to be touched with the feelings of, inf of, God's inf of, of the infirmity of God's people. Do you know that if you are called into the healing ministry, you will be surprised at the kind of training you will go through. You will never be able to minister to people with a dimension of innocence. There is a requisite level of association. You must know what sickness does to people so that it will fuel compassion when you see someone on a wheelchair this is more than your ego there is there is a memory bank in your history where you can draw power from it would have been unfair for God to say men did not love him without becoming a man even though he was God he needed to become a man subject himself through the limitations of men and Jesus was surprised that when he became a man he cried he was surprised that when he became a are you getting blessed that when he became a man he was hungry and cursed a tree when he became a man he saw them insulting the house of god turning it into a place of merchandise he did not report them he flogged them now when he ascended to heaven as man he tells the father i was there I know what it means to come and preach on Sunday when there is a plethora of betrayal waiting for me as a man of God. I, I understand. I know what it means to be praying for people and praying for people and maybe your own family may be going through the same challenge. Yet the burden of ministry demands that you remain true and consistent. That you learn to look beyond yourself. There is a time when both Joseph and the wine presser can be in the prison. So if they ask you as an onlooker to give a judgment about all those you find in prison, you can use the attitude of sarcasm to say, I saw Joseph, I saw the builds and altar that is backed up by blood. That even in the secret, the jealousy of God is invested upon that altar. Believe There are certain doors that you don't use a key. You use blood to open them. And there are men and women who have gone through this laborious. The training of the great is a training that God has to hold your hand to go through. Some of you right now, as I'm speaking to you, you are seated. You are in that season. Hmm. Cry with honor. Do not be ashamed of your scar. What looks like a symbol of shame today will become your badge of honor. He said, let no man trouble me. That the difference between an attack of the enemy and a season you are passing through is that even in the pit, there is still the signature of dominion and favor. The Bible says, even though it was in the prison, there was a token that God left, that let this be a signature, oh Joseph, that when darkness is all around you, remember that this seed of dominion is still within you. Now for time's sake, the Bible tells us that Joseph, that man, never did Joseph give them the history of how he got there. He was more passionate about serving them and lifting them. And heaven was marking that examination. Joseph had every legitimate ground to say, Young man, don't disturb me with your noise. You offended the king. It's a shame that you got to the throne and you are still back to the pit. I'm an innocent man with prophecy upon my head. I've worked with character and integrity. And now I find myself here. But Joseph said, forget about me. My focus is to see that you are lifted. So then death works in us. The Bible says that life will work in you. That you are trust when the money comes. God says bring it to this ministry and sow it. And you walk like someone who doesn't know what he's doing. And while you are doing it. An onlooker is saying this church thing is really making people mad. And they do not know that there is a system of justice that is vetting the sincerity and the purity of your heart are we blessed mm. 
A prison is a place of confinement. A prison is a place of delay. A prison sometimes can be a place of slavery. But I want to tell you prophetically, a prison is a training ground. It's a place where God trains you. Are we blessed? Many of us are there now. Never trust people who do not have the history of a prison in their journey. Uh -uh. There is a requisite level of qualification that you're passing through the prison adds to your spiritual credentials as you minister on behalf of his majesty. I don't want to know your story. Tell me your pain. There are things I'm searching for. I don't trust your compassion until I see what you've gone through. If you have not been touched with the feelings of the infirmity, I don't believe you truly love people. There are things you go through that fuel genuine compassion. When someone comes to your office and says, Man of God, I'm not an irresponsible man. This finance thing is not just working. You don't laugh at him with sarcasm. You say, I've been there. I serve God with my heart and suddenly the grace rises from that gate of compassion. There are many talkatives in the body of Christ without the history of the dealings of the spirit. This is why compassion has not been able to come in the heart of many people. There are people who love God and train their children as best as they could. Raise them in the way of God. And those children just decided to go wayward. Be careful when you begin to conclude and, and, and analyze on those things. And say, no, no, if you train that child well, it may not always be so. Even Jesus, who beheld the word every day for three and a half years, while the crusade was going in negotiation to, to make money out of Jesus was going on. Is God speaking to us tonight? The prison. For the sake of time, let's discuss the subject of losses. We cannot understand restoration and we cannot understand coming back, bouncing back until we understand losses. To lose means to part ways with something, someone valuable or a time. To pathway with time, to pathway with something, to pathway with someone. And I wrote down here very quickly, we'll look at it. Five scriptural reasons why people lose anything at all. Five scriptural reasons. Now, these reasons capture both the training of the believer and a caution to a careless one. Are we together? Number one, the first reason according to scripture why people lose is lack of discernment. Please make sure you write it down. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1, please. Help us media. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. The first reason why people lose in this kingdom is lack of discernment. It says, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. It was while men slept, the Bible says, that the enemy came as a farmer too and planted something. So it says, awake thou that sleepest, and Christ shall give you light. Lack of discernment. In Genesis chapter 28, the story of Jacob's encounter at Luz that he would later call Peniel. It was the encounter where he saw a ladder ascending from the earth to the heaven. When you go to verse 16 of Genesis 28, the Bible says Jacob himself counseled himself and rebuked himself. He woke up from sleep. So the problem was sleep. He woke up from sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know. There are many people who have lost seasons because they could not discern. 
There are many people who have lost relationships because they could not discern. There are many people who have missed an opportunity to receive territorial anointings because they could not discern. Discernment. Lack of discernment. Number two, for time's sake, we have to rush. The second reason why people lose in this kingdom and then in life and destiny is carelessness. The second biblical reason why people lose is carelessness. An attitude of non-challenge to life, non-challenge to destiny, non-challenge to walk. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3, please. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation how shall we escape that means bondage is imminent for anybody who lives a life of negligence are we together carelessness taking life for granted taking things for granted taking opportunities for granted oh there's a free mentorship session with my pastor but what is that about i mean i can always get it careless approach to life One day I'll be anointed. I, I think there's, there's always time. All this fasting and prayer is, is an interruption to my life. Carelessness. He says, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. There is timing with destiny. Every time is not the right time. Every time is not convenient. He says, while it is day for the night cometh when no man can walk again. Are we together? In athletics, in football, and most sports, they have an age range. No, no matter how passionate you are about it, once you pass that age range, sorry for you. Football, they have an age range. Tennis, and all of these sports, they have an age range. Athletics, it is important for you to know that there is timing to destiny. So carelessness. Revelations chapter 3 and verse 11. Revelations 3 and verse 11. Read with me please if you are a Christian and you can see it. One, two, read. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast which thou hast that no man. Carelessness. Let it never be for you that let his bishopric let another take. Carelessness. Number three, very quickly. Why do we lose in this kingdom? Ignorance of the laws of life, the laws of destiny, laws of the kingdom. Ignorance of the laws of life, the laws of destiny, the laws of the kingdom. Psalm 82 and verse 5. That ignorance is a plague in this kingdom. It says they know not. Neither will they understand. That they walk on in darkness. And all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Lack of light. Verse 6 says I have said. All of you are gods. And you are children of the most high. The tragedy is in the next verse. Verse 7 it says but you shall die like mere men. And fall like one of these princes ignorance ignorance is a terrible plague isaiah 60 and verse 1 says arise shine it says not because you are tired of sitting there for your light has come not because your light is around it's always been around but the day it comes to you ezekiel chapter 2 when you read from verse 1 and 2 he had an instruction rise up and he had no strength he says, but the spirit entered into me, verse 2, and set me upon my feet. It takes light. It takes an understanding of the ways of God. Many people are ignorant of the ways of God. We just live our lives sociologically. Sadly, you hear this all around our society. Why sayings like one day go better? Why sayings like, um, I know one day, one day things will change. You see, all those kinds of thinkings. 
will be to our own peril. Our lives must be intentional. The Bible says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned, except he strives lawfully. The quality of my life and your life is predicated on our depth of spiritual illumination. Our understanding the ways of God. Not just a religious study of scripture. But study of scripture that reveal to us the keys of the kingdom. Are we blessed? Number four. Why do we lose in life and in this kingdom? Abuse and misuse. The fourth reason why we lose, abuse and misuse. In Matthew 25, the parable of the talents, when you read from verse 14 down to 30, Matthew 25, the Bible talks about the parable of three men who were given talents. One was given five, the other two, one. The Bible says the one with five went and traded it and returned back with a hundred percent the other one with two returned back with a hundred percent and the one who had one already he had an attitude of bitterness and jealousy and anger and he went and buried it you bury seeds not talents and when the master came he said i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you did not sow so i thought instead of wasting my time let me bury it here is your seed and god called him wicked and unprofitable that everything God gives you let me tell you something you see we talk a lot about transfer whether well transfer or it's not only unbelievers that good things leave believers who have who have a track record of abuse and misuse will also lose things because God is a God of of, of caution and he's a God of responsibility. If you are hungry and he feeds you with five loaves and two fish, and you now eat and you are full and carelessly waste the rest, he will say, go and gather the crumbs. But tomorrow you can be sure you will not get that bread again. God was so meticulous, he showed us a sense of responsibility and caution. When all those guys ate and they littered everywhere and left, he said, go and gather the crumbs. And they gathered 12 baskets full abuse there are people who have abused power there are people who have abused and misused money there are people who have abused and misused the anointing abused and misused leadership africa as a continent is in a plague today sadly because of different levels of abuse and misuse of authority and power the fifth reason why we lose in this kingdom it can be because of the tests and the trials that we are going through it is possible that because of the dealings and the trainings you are going through in the spirit for the sake of your destiny momentarily certain things can be withdrawn from your life that is true the bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that during your period of training it was apostle james chapter 1 from verse 2 please give it to us james 1 and verse 2 he said count it all joy my brethren when you go through diverse temptations secure your stability with this knowledge he says knowing this james chapter 1 from verse 2 knowing this that the trying of your faith he says works patience are we together verse 3 and that when patience has had its full work in you, it will be able to build you paraphrasing so that you may be perfect and entire. Wanting, the word wanting there is lacking. Nothing. So sometimes God takes things from you so that tomorrow you will not have any lack again. There are times that God will take your seed of today away from you so that tomorrow you will not need to beg again. It is not listen god does not just give he also takes away but when he takes away it really is a spiritual investment because with god it will always come back hallelujah yes so these are the five reasons that i piece together from scripture as to why people lose a quick recap number one 
that people lose because of lack of discernment that people lose because of carelessness that people lose because of ignorance of the laws of life destiny and the kingdom that people lose because of abuse and misuse but then that there are times that this group of people because of the seasons that they are in with God the season of dealing that they can go through tests and trials Job chapter 1 when you read from verse 9 the whole text is from verse 9 to 22 Job chapter 1 from verse 9 to 22 but let's look at at least 9 10 and 11 the Bible says then Satan answered the Lord and said does Job fear God for nothing next verse hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land now hear what Satan says but put forth your hand now and touch all that he had and he will curse you to your face in other words Job's allegiance and loyalty to you oh God is fake he's only saying it on the strength of those things the next verse that should be 12 and the Lord said unto Satan very scary scripture behold all that he hath is in thy power only upon himself put not thy hand so Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and then sin 2 is what begins to happen in the earth there was a day the Bible calls it a day of adversary that in every man's life there is such a phenomenon a day of adversary that if you turn aside in that day the diagnosis is that your strength is small hallelujah hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.